What's up guys, Barry Gaming here, back with some more Idle Heroes, and we're back with the last one of the day, I swear, just this one last Four Seas video. Again, most of these are just first impressions, very unoptimal, just what does it feel like on an average player's account, and the one thing we are going to test them out on, coming up next, is Broken Spaces. So, we already have him kind of geared up for a way that we want to run him, so let's make sure we get our whole gear set up going. Uh, we're gonna run him of course with the holy damage the artifact. I don't know just yet Let's let's take a look and see what we want to run on him. We're gonna run him essentially with ticks as well I believe so we are gonna leave the void enables on this hero um, Antlers cane might be the best pick for him honestly over Punisher staff is my first guess so we're gonna run him like this with very low crit rate, but of course Good skill damage. I think that's going to be the most optimal way to run him. We are going to, of course, have a Heart Watcher on the squad. I guess that gear setup works. Uh, we'll use some Fearless Armor since she's only a 9-star. We're, of course, going to be using a Death Sworn with Energy for that burn. So we got one, two, three. We are going to have to run Drake. That is pretty much a must. Um, no, nah, that's fine. I like that setup. That'll be good. Void zero. So we got one, two, uh, three, four. We got spot for two more. So I'm guessing what we're going to do is just run these ticks in here as well. Um, looks good. Looks good. Although that artifact is kind of useless, but there's really not really any opportunities to change that out. So let's jump into it. Let's see what type of damage he can do. We'll try to get through the first waves pretty easily. And then we'll have to see how he performs versus uh, some of the waves that have buffs. Because that's one of the biggest things here. So let's jump into it. The first few should be really easy, I'd imagine. I'm interested to see who's going to do the most damage here. Of course, he's already stunned. <laughs> Is he going to get an active off? Yeah, it didn't really do all that much. But man, that black hole feels like it's doing a ton of damage. I feel like Drake's the winner here. No, actually, Forces was the big one. All right, that's interesting. Let's see how this works out. All right, next up. I don't know. I don't think they have buffs, do they? Well, I guess we'll never know because if they get, like, end of round buffs, they're just going to disappear immediately, huh? <laughs> All right, let's see. Let's see. Granted, the Forces better be doing the most damage here because he has the most... Well, he has the only Void enables, the Void imprint set up, so... He better pop off, but it's already feeling like he might be worse than Aspen in PvE, which says something, right, guys? Oh, man. All right. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, I mean, nothing really super impressive as far as damage is going out here. It's taking long fights. It's pretty much equivalent to a Tix that doesn't even have Void enables. Yeesh, that's a little sketchy. <laughs> But again, we got to see if maybe when we get some enemies that have buffs, that'll work, which I think there's some that do. do jar, I think the jar wave does? Question mark? I don't know. I have to see. All right. All right. So yeah, the Margaret's not really much is going to happen against them either. So damage is damage and we're not even one shotting the wave, which feels really, really bad. So kind of what we initially thought, at least my first impressions were as far as PVE goes, I don't think this hero is going to be great because you got to remember this is comparing damage to like Tixes as well. And ticks don't do that much damage in PVE. I think Gru's have buffs, right? I think. We'll see. Ah, they do have buffs. The active did remove the buff right there. Let's see if there's any big damage end of round. They also have that little mark on them that reduces their HP, but I don't think it really affects PvE bosses. Yeah, it doesn't really seem like it. The damage is decent, but again, that's not a whole lot of damage for, for, for this hero. It really isn't. I want to get to the later battles here. 
let's get you guys out let's throw a couple ticks in sure let's clear the wave okay this is where i think it might get interesting but again grew had debuffs and it didn't make a huge or grew had buffs which didn't make a huge difference here God, there's so many like the one bad thing with the scrolling combat text we have now is like the end of round just gets so confusing with all the all the abilities just stacking up with damage there i mean there's like a 10 million in there but i feel like that might actually be drake's damage although it could be the big damage from forcey's end of round damage as well question mark maybe kind of sort of yeah no I feel like this is this is going to be a really interesting hero. I think overall, Four Seas is going to be like a very strong hero in the very end game meta. But for the average player, I think he'll only do kind of decent. Again, literally, I feel like the only spot Four Seas is going to have a place is going to be PvP. He's kind of like a carry where well, even carry has uses outside of PvP. We got to see if Four Seas can do anything in Sea Land later, but as far as straight up PvE damage goes, he is not really going to be the one you want to go to because you got to remember, again, this is almost a V3 hero and we're only doing this much damage on waves like this. So it's not a ton. That was a pretty good one. 2.6 um that really isn't anything special though for these types of waves. Let's take a look at the Oberon and the uh whatchamacallit? Corpse Demon wave. This one I'm not sure about either. Granted, Oberon does have buffs. The problem is the active immediately removes a buff from a hero, which almost seems counterintuitive that you're removing the buffs that you want the curse to destroy. It's really confusing how this works. <laughs> Let's see what happens. So it got rid of, ah, it didn't get rid of it at all. Interesting. Oh, could you not be twine, please? That would be amazing, sir. <laughs> it's twine. I mean, the damage seems decent. Of course, we just keep getting twine, so. That's the one downside of testing on this wave is CC really plays a big part. I really want to see how this works against Ada and Aspen though. I mean, 384 million, considering he got CC'd so much, doesn't really feel good. 3.4, I mean, that's kind of average for, I feel like most players on this wave. The big test is really gonna to have to be right here. I want to see how this team works and what happens. Because I don't really think they have buffs. We're going to have to see what heroes in Flame Shrine have buffs. To see if we can optimize his damage output. But, I don't know. Man, the one thing running two ticks in PvE is... Uh, you really lower the incoming damage by a ton by using these heroes. Forcey's having such a low crit chance too feels really bad. Even for scenarios like this where we're trying to heal ourselves with unbending, or not unbending, with a uh, balance strike. Sadly, the Drake went down. Yeah. That's going to make a big difference in our damage, so that's not a great example there. But still, 3 billion is not horrible on this wave. It's still decent. But again, I'm not seeing this hero being this like amazing god tier PvE damage dealer. He's starting to feel like more of a PvP counter. So if, if you're going up against a lot of Scarlet Queens, if you're going up against a lot of heroes like Rogans that gives out tons of buffs, I do think he will be strong. But um, yeah, Cliff Notes version, not exactly a PvE hero here. Especially since Aspen would be doing much better of a job, and we all know what Aspen's tier is right now. <laughs> Man, he cannot crit to heal himself to save his life. Is he going to die again? God, his crit chance is so low for a new hero. For a mage, especially. Okay, this is going decent. As long as Drake can stay alive, please. Kill, 
Kill the Death Sworn off. Ugh, those Horrifies feel bad. Yeah, 185 million basic. It's not a whole ton. 245 million base or active. It's all right. This will be a better example of what our damage can do. Granted, I do think Drake might die at the end here. Hopefully he doesn't. Hopefully he, ah, he did die before the very last round. But again, the damage, like even as basic at the end of rounds, like it's just not that much damage. Just not that much. It's, it's good, but for a void three essentially hero, it's just not good enough in my opinion. I feel like if we did that with the ticks or even the Drake, we would probably be in comparable range of damage. So yeah, is it worth it for PVE if you're a PVE player? No, you are not going to want to build this hero for PVE. This is going to be, in my opinion, a very exclusively PVP only hero. We will try out the void, but that probably won't be till uh, tomorrow. We'll try him when, uh, void vortex opens up to see what he can do but again i know i probably sound like a complete broken record four c's pvp very strong in the end game decent in the mid game should you use heroic scrolls on him wait till tomorrow i'm gonna have a little bit more research we're gonna catch up with june gdp talk about the hero a bunch to see what everybody's overall opinion is and then we will give you our opinion on if you should build the hero so be patient i know you guys want to use your scrolls but you want to make sure you play smart especially since the event isn't the best for using scrolls it's a really good event for free like if you're just not using any scrolls it's actually pretty good but if you're using scrolls you're not getting that many extra benefits so let me know what you guys think hopefully you guys are enjoying all these four c's videos and i'll see you guys next time